guys. So today we're going to play with um, an arm balance. And before you get too excited and turn this video off and try something else, I just want you to like, hear me out for a second. Because, um, you know, a lot of people think about arm balance as being very challenging, a lot of upper body strength, a lot of core strength. And they oftentimes look at these things as being very frustrating and they just sort of let them get them down. But today we're just going to have fun. We're just going to play with one that is safer, you're not going to have a crash landing, everything is going to be fine. We're just going to play with a little bit of a different variation on one of the arm balance. We're going to play with baby curl today. So just going to give you a couple of things to do to sort of help warm up and prepare the body for it. So the first thing we're going to do is bring the feet nice and wide, a little bit wider than hips width distance apart, and toes pointed out, heels in, and then sit down into our squat. So this is Malasana. This is the yogi squat. I'm sure you've seen this before. But um, instead of sort of sitting up tall like you would as part of the practice, I want you to walk your hands out and sort of let your upper body round forward. So let me turn to the side so you can see what that action looks like. So heels should be on the floor. And you're going to sort of put some of the weight back. And then you're going to round through the upper back. And just let everything sort of drop through. So you'll notice that leg back has this nice sort of curve to it. And I'm letting that happen in this book. So this is just sort of getting used to what your spine feels like in a pose where the back has an incredible amount of rounding. Because we're going to need an incredible amount of rounding to get into baby crop. So just sort of maybe even wiggle from side to side if that feels good in your hips. But just sort of let the upper body round and go. And as you're in this pose, you can sort of feel the space between your shoulder blades sort of opens up a little bit and relaxes. Good. And then coming back and coming onto all fours. Let's do a little bit of cat pose. So again, just working on warming up the upper part of the spine to give you this nice, supported, rounded feeling. Place your wrists underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. And we're going to work cat pose. So press into your hands and start to round your upper back. Tuck your pelvis under and look back towards your hips. So just like a cat is stretching. That's what we're going for here. So you'll feel again the space between your shoulder blades. Shoulder blades start to move towards the side, upper back, really getting a nice big active rounding action happening. This is nice first thing. Just push, 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 push with your hands, working on getting a little bit of strength to that stretch. The and release out of that. So the next thing we're going to do just to sort of start warming the body up for this is come into um, a variation on dolphin pose or a forearm position. So when you set up your hands on the mat, you want to have your elbows close enough that you could grab them and then turn them straight and put the, press the hands straight down into the mat. So if you start in that position, holding onto opposite elbows, then just release your hands, swing them out, and plant your hands on the floor. So don't move the elbows. This is where you want your elbows to stay. We're going to work on building a little bit more shoulder strength. So first thing we're going to do here is tuck the toes under. And just start to put a little bit more weight into the shoulders. And this time, let's work on keeping the shoulders over the elbows. So instead of letting the weight go forward or back, keep the shoulders nice and lined up. Press into your elbows, press into your forearms, press into your hands, and just lift the hips. It takes a lot of work. But find that cat pose. So really rounding into the upper back. Ooh. Takes a little bit of work. And then lots of strength moving here. And drop the knees down and release. So in a lot of poses, and it's true, we should be keeping sort of the joints stacked and not shifting too far forward. So in this pose, we are going to shift the shoulders a little bit forward. Now, um, a couple of things. When we shift the weight forward, a lot of time what that turns into is dumping and collapsing into the shoulders. So everything sort of goes, as we move the shoulders forward, we sort of go into this position where the chest comes forward and you collapse into your upper back. Instead, I want you, as we move the shoulders forward, to think about pressing more into the elbows and forearms so that you bring that rounded action back. And then we shift forward with a nice rounded back. Okay, so let's practice that. Hands down. Make sure you're at the right distance. Plant them down. 
Let's stay on the knees to start here. But push into your elbows, push into your palms, push into your hands, round your upper back. Then without losing that strength, push forward. Shoulders coming towards your wrists. Keep that strength, keep that rounding. Fight, fight, fight. Good. This is the position we're going to work our way into. Okay? So the shift back. Oh, let that go. Oh. All right. Do it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into a squat, but we're going to bring our feet together and be on the balls of our feet. So from the front, it sort of looks like this. And you can have your hands on the floor. So then we're going to bring the elbows in nice and close, line them up, make sure we get a nice alignment from this really teeny tiny little package. Okay, so we're now we're going to work the knees as high up onto the arms as possible, preferably like in the elbows. Okay, so my toes are still on the ground, my head looking slightly forward, not down towards my feet, I don't want to fall inward. So reach the neck long, round the upper back, round, 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 round. Really pull the belly up, lifting the hips, shift your weight forward, keep rounding. Long neck, you're going to come really close to the floor. Then from here, keep rounding. You're not going to lift forward anymore, you're just going to pull the toe up, and then another foot up. And then as your bicep wants to come towards your forearm, resist that to stay lifted. And then if you're ready, come on. Okay, so how'd that go? <laughs> um, so it's, it takes a little bit of ease, too. You gotta make yourself this really teeny tiny little package. And you really have to work that upper back rounding and have a lot of strength behind it. So you, you can go through the poses that I gave you to prep for this and do them one more time and then try it again. Another option that you could do is to take a block and place it between your elbows, and that gives you something to squeeze into. If you put it between your hands, you're going to run into it when you lean forward. So put it between your elbows, squeeze in. That will give you something to leverage to help you round the upper back. But the keys to this pose is how much you can round your upper back and hold that to counterbalance the weight of your legs. So keep trying. Have a little fun with it. We'll see you next time.